The top 10 what-if players in NBA history. Number 10, Larry Bird. This is a weird way to start the list, I know. I have Larry Bird as the sixth greatest player of all time, but he could have been so much more if two things didn't happen. If one, he hired someone to do his mom's driveway for her in 1985, which severely shortened his career. And two, if Len Bias didn't die, resulting in Bird for the second half of his career having to carry the Celtics offensively on an unstable back. Number nine, Yao Ming. Yao Ming was an unbelievable talent with terrible foot injuries. He was a five-time All-NBA player and eight-time All-Star who could have been so much more if it wasn't for constant injuries throughout his career. He probably would have dealt with foot injuries regardless due to his height and size, but it didn't help that China forced him to play basketball year-round with no time to recover. Number eight, Greg Oden. Oden is seen by many as a draft bust, but I don't think that's fair at all. In the games that he played, he showed a bunch of flashes of being truly great. He unfortunately just could never stay healthy. Number seven, Tracy McGrady. T-Mac was unbelievable in the early 2000s, with there being legitimate arguments at that time between him and Kobe as the best shooting guard in the world. However, those arguments were quickly diminished over time as T-Mac suffered nagging injury after nagging injury. Number six, Ralph Sampson. Ralph Sampson was Victor Wembanyama before Victor Wembanyama. I'm not kidding. And he lived up to the hype in the beginning of his career, averaging 21 and 10 for his first three seasons. Unfortunately, his 7'4 frame just could not stand up to the NBA seasons, resulting in a ton of injuries that cut his career short. Number 5, Penny Hardaway. Did you know that Anne-Marie Hardaway's nickname, Penny, stemmed from his grandmother calling him pretty, but because of her southern accent, it sounded like Penny? Hardaway was an All-NBA first team member twice and was shaping up to be a great guard before blowing out his knee in 1998, effectively ending his career as a top-level guy. Number 4, Grant Hill. By all accounts, Grant Hill should have been the spiritual successor to Magic Johnson and the spiritual predecessor to LeBron in the 90s and early 2000s. An explosive, do-everything guy, but he dealt with a myriad of ankle injuries that made him never the same as a player. Number three, Len Bias. Len Bias isn't just associated with what he would have been as a player, but rather what the Celtics franchise would have been with him at the helm and Larry Bird. If Bias successfully lived up to his potential, there's a good chance Bird could have extended his play well into the 90s, since he wouldn't have to carry the offensive load night in and night out as much. Number 2. Derrick Rose Derrick Rose won an MVP at freaking 22 years old. You could argue that he never would have stayed healthy with his size and style of play, but if he could have, there's a good chance he would have been an All-NBA slash MVP candidate for the next 8-10 to 10 years. Number 1. Bill Walton Bill Walton was 24 when he won his first championship and 25 when he won his first MVP and was looking to be the next dominant center after Kareem. But unfortunately, like a lot of massive centers, Walton dealt with foot injuries that cut his career unbelievably short. There's a chance that he could have been talked about as a top 15 player ever and perhaps even a top 5 center with how his career started.